Welcome to Health Coach for Women. Intentional living for more happiness and fulfillment in your everyday life with your host, Marsha Rupchand Walker. Join Marsha as she shares her own personal wellness journey, as well as stories from our guests that will enlighten and inspire you to move towards better health and happiness. Now, here's your host, Marsha Rupchand Walker. Hello, and welcome to another episode of Health Coach for Women, a podcast where we explore alternative solutions for better health and wellness. And I am your host, Marsha. Now, before we get started, please go ahead and hit that like button, share, and subscribe. All right, I have a quote for you today, and that is, beauty begins the moment you decide to be yourself. And that's by Coco Chanel. I like that. I like that. It's always great to be yourself. Okay, so today I want to talk to you about deciding if you should get a Brazilian butt lift, right? Brazilian butt lift and things you should know before you consider it. Now, there's no no judgment on my part. So just to be transparent, I myself have personally, I personally have had a BBL and LiPo 360. All right. It was a personal choice that I wanted for myself. And um, do I say, will I say I regret it? No, I don't. And would I do it again? No, I wouldn't. Right. Um, But I just wanted to put that out there. Uh, And for those who are considering it again, you know, to each his own. So just to reiterate, for those who are considering having cosmetic surgery, Right, any cosmetic surgery, but particularly, particularly the Brazilian butt lift, um, you definitely want to strongly consider. Again, I don't really have any regrets. Um, I'm okay with the decision that I made. Again, everyone have to be uh, is okay to make the decision that they want to make for themselves. All right, and I just wanted to put that out there. So, my experience. Um, my healing process is going to be different from what someone else may experience. Um, my recovery was not two weeks. It was a little longer. Okay. But the most uh, part that was very difficult for me was really just getting used to sleeping, uh, not sleeping on my back or my side. That was that was really the hardest challenge um, and not being able to be as mobile as I would like to be. Um, But other than that, everything else was a breeze. Um, That's pretty much just the healing process. Um, Going into the surgery room, scary. Um, Waking up after surgery uh, was okay. And just a little bit of pain, some pain, not much. and just just basically, um, the whole ordeal was something, um, but it wasn't it wasn't as bad as I thought it was going to be. But no, I would not do it again. Okay, I would not do it again. Okay, so just want to put that out there and share that with. Um, but I just wanted to say there are some things that you need to consider and to take into consideration. Right. And some things that you know and how you should prepare yourself post op as well as pre op and post op. Right. And so um, I'm going to cover some of those things with you today. And so the first question is okay, should you get a BBL? Right. Should you get a BBL? It's people's personal preference, just like a person could go fix their teeth. They uh, they want to fix whatever it is on their body. It's a personal preference. Um, I'm not to say if you should or you shouldn't, right? But there are risk involved, okay? High risk. Now, of course, getting your teeth clean at the dentist is no way in comparison to getting a Brazilian butt lift, okay? It's a very dangerous cosmetic procedure. 
and I'm going to give you the good as well as the bad. Now, this is particularly for women over 50, right? Um, because some people uh, are, you know, want to get it done uh, over 50. And you can as long as you're healthy. And you can. Okay. So, but you want to make sure they, and that's why they take you through this whole process, a whole screening process that you have to go through. You want to make sure that you are healthy. There's no need in lying about your health. Okay. I've heard stories where people, and these are not even people in their fifties, in the, in young, in their twenties, is the lying about their health conditions. Okay. Lying about their things, uh, health things that's wrong with them. And unfortunately, they uh, put themselves at risk and things went wrong where they have uh, had severe complications or even passed away from the procedure. Now, that's pretty extreme. And so we can't blame the doctors on everything because the doctor is only going by what you tell them. And so you got to be honest. You know, the price of beauty should not cost you your life. Okay. The price of beauty shouldn't cost you your life. And so you have to be honest um, when you go through the questionnaire. And there are things that before you even, they consider you as a candidate, you already know that they're going to have, they want to know information about your weight, right? Uh, you have to send in photos. They want to look, they want to know your weight, your height, your weight. And even if you're a bit overweight, you may have to lose some weight before you even get the procedure, okay? You have to lose weight before you get the procedure, okay? Or you may be underweight. You might not be a, a, a candidate for it. So again, when the doctors or the coordinators or whoever are speaking to you and giving you information, you want to make sure you follow that to a T because it's protecting them as well as yourself, okay? As well as yourself. And so you do have to get a checkup. You do have to make sure that your heart is in good condition, right? They they want to make sure that you are in uh, good health before they proceed with even considering you to be a candidate. And so once you, if you lie, you're not serving anyone, okay? You're really doing yourself a great disservice and you're putting yourself in danger, all right? And you're putting that doctor uh, at risk, you know, for possibly having their license suspended or whatever, all right? But more importantly, your life is more important. So if you're going to consider getting a cosmetic procedure done, particularly the Brazilian butt lift, um, you need to be aware of the good as well as the bad, okay? And so the reason why uh, the Brazilian butt lift is considered the most dangerous surgery is because in the buttocks era, you have the vagal nerve. And so a person can perform the pr procedure and go too deep and a nerve, just a simple nerve that can uh, cause an issue or cause some type of blockage or something can be detrimental. And this is not to scare you. This is just to give you all the facts. Google it. Look it up, you know, about the Brazilian butt lifts, the vagal nerve, the vagus nerve. Uh, and you can find you can find information on it. You will even probably find some uh, health professionals talking about it. Right. So you want to make sure um, that you do your research on the doctor. Right. You do your research on the doctor. You want to make sure they're licensed. OK, you want to make sure they're licensed and you want to make sure that the majority of their procedures has been good. Now, are there doctors out there where something has gone wrong? Yes. Right. It happens. And again, it can come from either people not being honest, you know, through questionnaires or it was a simple uh accident, unfortunate actual accident where something went wrong. Or the doctor could not have, have done anything at all wrong. It's just that complications can arise after the procedure. Okay. Complications can arise 
after the procedure. And that's why post-op is so important. Okay, post-op is so important. So if you're going to do it, you want to make sure you're in a healthy uh, condition. If you're not exercising, you may want to consider exercising. If you are overweight, you may want to consider losing some weight first. They're going to let you know. They're going to tell you. All right. Um, you know, exercise, get in shape, start taking your iron, right? Your fluoridics you need to build up. They're going to tell you, you, you um, avoid green tea. Okay. Um, prior to surgery, you'll have to stop taking it. Okay, um, um, because it acts as a blood thinner. So you want to make sure you, you, you have to list, make sure you follow the instructions. Okay, you have to make sure you follow instructions and you want so you want to build up your strength. You want to make sure um, that you're physically able to handle the surgery. Okay, you want to make sure that if you're going to go as far as now after surgery, during surgery, of course, if you going somewhere out of town, you want to make sure that you're staying at a good, reputable place. Um, uh, what do they call those? Those, those houses. Um, what do they call them? The houses, where you, recovery houses, um, where you're going to stay. You know, things that you want to be aware of. You know, will they be? You know, checking on you regularly, frequently. Will you have to share a room? How many people in a room? You know, is. You just want to know and have all of these questions ready. You have to be willing and ready to do your research. It's not just, oh, I want to go and get this procedure done because I want this or I want that. You want to be definitely aware. And please do not even consider getting a tummy tuck along with the BBL. Many doctors, most doctors, I believe in the U.S. will not, will not do that. Now, if you go somewhere out of the country, such as DR, or any other place, they may consider it, okay? And that's very dangerous, guys. That's very dangerous. You should not do that. Remember, your body has to heal, and you're doing multiple surgeries at once. You, If you're working on the buttocks area and, and, and then doing the tummy tuck at the same time, it's, it's a lot on the body, okay? It's a lot on the body. Now, some people have recovered, and the recovery process is going to definitely uh, take some time, right? But each person's body and healing process is different. And so you want to make sure that you have somewhere and you're somewhere safe. You're somewhere where uh, you have people that can help you in case of emergency. If things were to go wrong, you want to make sure. You want to make sure that if, you, if you're going to stay at one of these recovery houses, it's worth the money to go ahead and, and stay at a place where there's an RN, okay? Or at least or at least a medical assistant, okay? Someone or a nursing assistant, someone who knows how they can take vitals, they can read vital signs uh, and things of that nature. You want to make sure that you do that, okay? So again, from... From the start is making sure that you begin the process when you fill out your questionnaire and they give you all of the information that you need and telling you you have to send them information. They're going to tell you uh, what you need. They're going to tell you what you need. They're going to tell you what you need to do. Uh, and they're going to let you know if you qualify or not. And if you don't meet the standards, then, you know, um, then you can try if you want to go back and still consider doing it, then meet the requirements Again, because it's for your safety. Okay, it's for your safety. Um, you want to make sure that you are uh, eating, of course, your fruits and vegetables, making sure that everything is in place, having um, when they set the arrangements for pickup, who's going who's to have you uh, ready for pickup for transport after, after the procedure, right? And so your recovery houses usually will have that incorporated in the package, your uh, your uh, transportation, right? And more importantly is getting those lymphatic massages. That's very important. According to globenewswire.com, an estimated 128,000 health coaches and health educators advise and motivate clients to change bad lifestyle habits and to manage chronic conditions such as diabetes. Consumers, employers, and insurers are each now more seriously focused on improving health and being proactive. 
insurance companies, doctors, and patients themselves see the critical need and demand for health coaches, as well as other integrated natural health practitioners. There is no doubt with the use of health coaches being a crucial part of the healthcare team brings added value to the client, patient, and the healthcare system overall. At Health Coach for Women, our mission to get clients to optimal health at the cellular level. We help clients manage their chronic pain, fatigue, insomnia, depression, anxiety, brain fog, diabetes, and gut health with three simple protocols. Once you become a client at HC4W, we take a simple test and assessment to determine a plan of action towards wellness. Schedule a call by going to healthcoachforwomen.com. The lymphatic massages are very important because it helps you to reduce the swelling. And some things that you can do to help with reducing your swelling uh, is taking things like pineapple juice, right? Um, and there are some products also that you can take uh, to help with re eliminating uh, the lymph, draining the lymph fluid. Okay, because your body, remember, after procedure, your, the procedure, your body is going to be swollen. You're going to be full of inflammation. Um, there's going to be plenty of swelling. And you may even have to wear the tights on your legs, okay, to help with swelling uh, and, and getting, making sure that you move. They'll be telling you that you need to walk, okay, that you need to move around, okay. You, you'll need to move around to move the fluid around. And so to reduce your risk of developing a blood clot. So I'm just telling you uh, the truth of what you can expect. Okay, so the healing process, again, can be different for everyone. Of course, people who are younger may heal faster. Some people who are older may heal quicker too. So they may have, they may have a, a great fitness routine. Maybe they're in excellent shape. Um, their recovery period may be less. And for someone who's not as active, maybe longer. So that's why I'm telling you um, that you need to do that. So it's important after after your surgery, you want to make sure that you get your uh, lymphatic uh, drainage treatments. That's very important. And I can't stress that enough. Now, and when you return home, um, some people will get their treatments while they're there. But when you return home, as long as you're still in the process of healing, you still want to continue getting those massages, okay? You can get those massages done. Um, why the, uh, and you can even have them, they can even pay for it under, depending on your health insurance. Um, you can get with a physical therapist and get treatments done. Or you can go to a regular spa uh, massage parlor where they do lymphatic drainage massages, specifically lymphatic drainage massages. And, and get those uh, get those treatments done. Okay, it's very important. And so, as far as scarring is concerned, um, you can you may want to use something like uh, Moderma, um, cocoa butter, right? Plain, just regular old cocoa butter, and. Um, Usually that's basically those are the two that I could think of, but I'm sure that there's more. But my derma is good to help with scarring. You really shouldn't have any real scarring um, because if you're getting the Brazilian butt lift, they're basically inserting the needles to pull out fat and then inject the fat in other places. So you may have holes, uh, needle mark holes, uh, in your back, uh, below the buttocks area where they injected the fat. Uh, and it may be, if you did your arms, you may have the needle marks behind the arms. So it just depends on what procedure you have. Now, tummy tuck is a little different, um, but with any surgery, you must be aware of the risk, okay? You must be aware of the risk. And so that's why following doctor's procedures order is, is important. And the medication that they're giving. Now, you don't want to go to a recovery uh, house and they're giving you canned soup. Those things are loaded with sodium. And that's the worst thing that they can be giving you because it can increase your blood pressure. Okay. So please, if they pull out the canned soup, 
you shouldn't you shouldn't eat it okay all right um so i just wanted to say that now um yeah getting those massages continue eating your fresh fruits and vegetables um you should be you should not be con having a uh, high sodium uh content food you should be eating uh just a well-rounded healthy diet okay and so this is what i tell people um to making sure that they get and know know everything know the good and the bad okay know the good and the bad um and hey if it if getting a butt lift helps you to boost your confidence helps you to feel uh more attractive whatever it is you know i say if it's something you want to do then go ahead and do it you know who am i to say anything who am i or anyone else to say what you should and shouldn't do okay um but know that you are beautiful uh you are beautiful in the creator's eyes no matter what right so i just wanted to put that out there but again ask questions if you're not sure on something give you the proper information and if you have to speak to the doctor you make sure you speak to the doctor they're so busy i tell you the one thing i could say about that with the cosmetic surgery it's like a factory uh, you know it's like a factory so they're producing it's like the people coming in they're just like on the conveyor belt you know and they're they just bringing them in they're, they're they're doing the work and shipping them out doing the work and assembling uh, doing what they need to do and shipping them out you know so a lot of times you may not have uh, a close relationship with your surgeon prior to surgery okay but if you do have the ability and have that experience where you can speak to your surgeon prior to surgery for any unanswered questions that you know your coordinator with your uh with your screening with the, with your health assessment be honest do not fake it you're only putting yourself at risk okay make sure you get those massages make sure that you let them know and any and all of the medications you are taking prior to surgery because they can advise you on what you shouldn't be taking or what you may have to wait because maybe you may have to complete a certain med first before you can even start the procedure so this is for your best interest guys all right so i just wanted to cover all of that again i mentioned about the healing process the healing is going to vary from person to person okay and oh another important thing i didn't talk about wearing your garment how could i forget that wearing your garment wearing your garment is essential for healing right because it helps to reduce the swelling and it helps to maintain the shape so wearing your garment is essential making sure you have the proper garment making sure you are, are wearing it uh and it you need to buy at least two and you need to make sure that you are changing your garment and making sure that it's the right fit for you okay making sure it's the right fit for you and keeping that garment on okay keeping that garment on maybe sleeping may be difficult for you right because again if you if you've had the bbl you cannot sleep on your on your bottom okay you have to sleep on your stomach or your side something like that. it's going to be uncomfortable for several weeks okay so you want to make sure that you do that make sure you follow instructions hydrate yourself move around that's important and get those uh manual uh lymphatic manual massages very very important and if you're feeling off something doesn't feel right make sure um don't hesitate to call your doctor or call your uh visit your local doctor or emergency room okay it's better to be safe than to be sorry all right so i hope this uh information on this episode on getting a brazilian butt lift has been beneficial um there are some products um that i'm not an affiliate but there are some products that i know that people have used um that has helped them and i will have those either up on the screen uh and maybe in a link below all right thank you so much until next time bye for now if you are struggling with health issues like chronic pain 
being held back by past traumas, or feeling overwhelmed and hopeless, please know there is hope. There is help. Transcendence, a woman's guide to healing and self-love for better health, happiness, and abundance is a blueprint to help you get your life back and reclaim your health. Within its pages, you'll learn how to elevate your existence by shifting your mindset toward the positive, focusing your energy on what's really important, using gratitude to feel deep appreciation, changing your gene expression through epigenetics, building resilience, and living in a state of flow. Feeling love overflow within. Go beyond an ordinary life. Transcend. Buy it now. Thank you so much for listening to Health Coach for Women with your host, Marsha Rupchan Walker. If you've enjoyed this podcast, please be sure to rate, subscribe, and review on your preferred podcast listening platform. We really appreciate that effort. Until next time.